Today we are covering advanced URL navigation for our Flutter web app. Hey guys and welcome back to episode 6 of the Flutter web basics series. Head over to foldstacks.com and open up the advanced URL navigation tutorial. We'll just quickly download the code and then we'll start with the tutorial. Once you've downloaded and extracted the code, you can open it up in your editor of choice. Before we start, I'd like to show you the state of the website and what we want to achieve with the URL navigation for the web app. So if you run the app at the moment and you navigate to episodes, you'll see the first thing is that the URL looks a bit ugly with the episodes being attached to the hash itself. And then clicking back doesn't work at all and clicking forward as well. If you navigate to a URL directly in the browser, it also doesn't work. So today that's what we want to fix and we'll be doing that by making use of some built-in Flutter functionalities. So I'm sorry for the, the IDE being so small, I actually fixed it up in like a few seconds after this. But the first thing we'll do is just update the route names for the router and we'll add a forward slash to all of the paths so that we can have a clear separation between the hash and the name of the path in the browser URL. Just as a quick check, if you navigate to home now or to episodes, you'll see there's a slash after the hash, which makes the URL look a bit better and easier to remember. Now, if you remember the template layout widget that we created, if you don't, I'll link it in the top right of this video. What this basically did was we had a navigator in the center of the view where we kept the navigation bar fixed and we would swap out the center of the view in the expanded widget. Flutter has a built-in functionality that does this for us and it's by providing the builder function to the material app. This function will return the current build context for that material app as well as the child that is produced by the route generation function that we have. This means that the child we get back for this builder function is actually the view that we want to show. What that means for us is that we can pass that into our layout template and remove our internal navigator, meaning that the material app will now handle all the navigation and we'll just display the child within the template layout. To start working on this functionality, you can open up the layout template and then we'll add a child property, which we'll pass in through the constructor. We'll set it to be required. And then you can remove the child of the expanded widget and replace that with a child that we passed in. Then you can open up the main file and for the builder function we'll now return the template layout and for the child we'll pass in the child property passed back by the builder function. And the last thing we want to do is supply all the properties that we supply to our custom navigator to our material app. We'll supply the navigator key by getting the navigation service and providing it with a navigator key. We'll also set the onGenerateRoute function to the onGenerateRoute function from our router file. And for the initial route, we'll set it to the home route. If you look at the navigation at the top now, it still looks the same, but everything else works as you would expect it from a web app. If you navigate back, you'll go back in the back stack. If you navigate to a URL directly, the view will show up as well. Next up, what I want to cover is passing query parameters to a page view. We currently have an episode view in the code base and I want to pass an ID to that episode view and display the details of that episode using the ID passed in directly from the URL. It currently doesn't work as you can see if you do navigate to something with some query parameters. What we'll do is extract the data from the URL into a new class called routing data. The routing data will contain the route that we are trying to navigate to as well as a map that describes the query parameters that we've passed into the URL. We'll then use an extension to deconstruct and return our routing data to us. We'll start by creating the model for the routing data. So under data models, create a new file called routing data. This will be a class called routing data. It will have a final property of type string called route. And it will also have another final property of type map string string and it will be called query parameters. These two values will both be passed in through the constructor. Since the query parameters value is private, we will pass in a value of type map string string called query parameters, and we'll set that in the constructor equal to the private query parameters value. 
The reason that the query parameters is private is because I don't want to expose all of them as the map. So what we'll do is we'll override the operator, the square bracket operator, and we'll pass in a string called key. And what we'll do with that is just index in the query parameters and return that as the value of that operator. To get the routing data, we will create a new extension on the string. So we'll create a new file under the extensions folder called string extensions. We'll define an extension called string extensions on the string type. Then we'll add a new property extension that returns type routing data and it will be called get routing data. The first thing we'll do is create a variable called URI data. This will keep the value of the result from a pause on the string that has been passed in, which we can access using this keyword. Then to show you what's happening with the parsing, we will print out the values in the URI data parameter. We'll first print out the query parameters by indexing into the query parameters in the URI data. And the second thing we'll print out is the path of the URI data. Then we can go ahead and construct a new routing data object. We'll pass in the query parameters from the URI data. And for the route value, we'll pass in the path from the URI data Head back to the router file and then we will store the routing data in a variable called routing data and we'll get that by indexing into the settings and calling get routing data on the name property. We can then go ahead and import the extensions from the extensions folder. Then we can change the switch statement to now use the route from the routing data. Then in the case statement for the episode details route will create a new variable called id we'll store the result of the int dot try pause function call and what we'll pass to it is the id key for the routing data then we can pass in the id that we just created into the episode details view if you run the code now and you navigate to episode question mark id equals three you'll see that it shows the fourth episode, which is the correct index for that ID. The next thing we want to do is navigate internally using the same URL as what we would do when coming to the website directly using the URL. To achieve this, we'll have to update our navigation service. And what we'll do is add a new parameter to the navigate to function and we'll use that to build up the route name that we want to show within the URL browser. The route name basically has to match what we would enter into the browser directly. You can open up the navigation service and then for the navigate to function, we'll add a new optional parameter of type map string string and we'll call that parameter query params. Then in the body of the function, we can check if the query params is not equal to null if it's not equal to null, we will set the route name equal to a URI where the path is set to the route name and the query parameters is set as the query params passed into the function. We'll call to string on that and set that to our route name. Now, since we know that we need the index to navigate to the episode details view, we will have to update the episode list to add a gesture detector and then pass in the index to the navigation call. So open up the episode list. The first thing we'll have to do is wrap the episode item widget with a gesture detector. We will then supply the on tap function and we'll call a function on the model that we still have to add. It will be called navigate to episode and it will take in an index of type int. For us to get the index back of the episodes, we'll have to convert the list of episodes to a map, which will produce a map with the key being the index value. Then the map function that we call on that map will allow us to get the index value as well as the value. For the value that we'll return, we will return a new map entry and we'll supply the index as the key again and the gesture detector as the value. Then to display the widgets only, we will call the values property to get the values and then call to list on that property to display the widgets only. Then we can go ahead and create the method navigate to episode on the episode list view model. We will import the navigation service using the locator. 
and then on that navigation service we will call navigate to passing in the episode details route and for the query params we will construct a map we'll supply a key of id and the index dot two string will be the value if you run the code now and you click on one of the episodes you should see the url matching the one that we entered earlier and the ui changing to match what we built earlier as well the back button works you can navigate directly to a url and this is exactly what you'd want in a normal web app and that's it for navigation for flutter web applications this will be my last video for this year I just wanted to say thank you for all the subscribers, all the views and all the support, as well as all the people that provides feedback to my tutorials, as well as my implementations of certain things. I don't see a lot more basics being covered in the Flutter web series. So next up or next year, I will be going into a very deep dive of Firebase and building a complete application with all the patterns I've been using in production for the past year. Have a good holiday season and I will see you guys next year.